The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to those of you who might be joining us from the Central, Mountain, or Pacific time zones. I should also say good evening, perhaps. We have some attendees who are joining us from the UK and from Australia today. So welcome, everyone, to the Introduction to Power Options presentation. Uh, today we're going to go through some of the tools on the Power Options site. We're going to discuss tips to help you navigate the site and save time with your options uh, research and analysis. And we're going to begin in just a few more moments. We're going to allow some time for some of, other, of our attendees uh, to come in and join us this afternoon. For those of you that are currently on your 14-day free trial, I just want to remind you that if you subscribe to Power Options before the end of your 14-day free trial, you will receive an additional 14 days for free. So you'll have use of the Power Options tools essentially for one whole month before you're billed for the service. Of course, at any time, if you have questions, if you're a subscriber or if you're a trial member, if you have questions about the Power Options tools or the general options strategies, just give us a call at the toll-free number. If you live outside the continental U.S., you can reach us at the international phone number, or just send us an email to support at powerop.com, and we'll uh, discuss that a little bit later. I also want to encourage everyone who's attending, whether you're on a 14-day free trial or whether you're a full subscriber to Power Options, to take advantage of our free coaching sessions. Um, the coaching sessions, you can have as many as you want during your trial or as a subscriber. They are completely free. The coaching session consists essentially of a 35 to 45 minute co phone conversation excuse me, with either myself or Ernie. We will walk you through the tools on the site, answer any questions that you have regarding general option strategies or using the tools for your techniques. Okay? Well, we're about a couple minutes after 12 o'clock noon Eastern time, so let's go ahead and get started. What I always like to do first is just describe, uh, give an overview of what is Power Options. Well, Power Options is a patented suite of search and analysis tools that was designed for self-directed options investors. Uh, the site was created by Ernie Zarenner about 12 years ago. Uh, Ernie was an engineer at Hewlett Packard and uh, Agilent. He had been trading options for several years, but he was doing it the old-fashioned way before he retired, of course. He was going into the uh, libraries, looking up newspaper articles, trying to identify stocks that he wanted through the different newspapers go through all his research analysis, then try to see if the stock was optionable, then do the calculations by hand of what his premium would be, his return would be, and so forth. He and his partner decided to help save time. They were going to create a suite of tools that would help them identify those positions uh, based on a filtering process that is now patented, where you could put in your specific criteria for the stock or the option uh, to find only those positions that match your personal risk-reward ratio. The patented search tool will scan the entire universe of options in a given strategy in less than a second, identify only those positions that match what you want to see. Uh, once you have identified those positions, you can quickly compare the risk versus reward uh, with one click using the More Information buttons, and we'll go through that today. Then we also have a powerful suite of portfolio tools that will help you paper trade, track, and manage uh, your positions as well, view potential rollout opportunities, and simulate the adjustment before making the trade. In addition to that, we also offer countless educational articles on the given strategies and the tools on power options, plus various strategy help pages as well. As I mentioned, we've been in business for over 12 years. Um, and we have many more years of combined trading experience with all the staff that's available to help you get acquainted with the tools or discuss the options techniques with you. Um, all of us here at Power Options use the tools to, for our research and analysis, I should say. Um, I myself, I only use my broker's tools. I have accounts at Options Express and at Fidelity. I only use my broker when I'm actually placing a trade. By the time I've logged into my brokerage account, I've already done my research and analysis on Power Options, identified my adjustments or identified the positions that I want to trade and the number of shares, and then I'll go into my broker. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to navigate over to the main Power Options screen. Uh, for those of you who are currently on your 14-day free trial, when you log on to Power Options, this is the general screen that you will see. If you're just getting started, as I mentioned, you want to take advantage of these four steps to help you get better acquainted. Start off, you can request a free user guide. Uh, we'll send you a free printed copy of our user guide and the quick startup guide to help you get acquainted with the tools. There are a variety of flash tutorials that are available in the Learning Center. Um, 
these will walk you through the tools on the site as well, sort of an interactive demonstration. We host a variety of free live webinars during the week, everything from strategy discussions to open forums to the introduction as we're doing today. And then, of course, you want to make sure you take advantage of those free individual coaching sessions. It should really be plural there. As I mentioned, there's no limit to the number of coaching sessions that you can have during your trial or as a subscriber, and they are completely free. You can also register for the free coaching session in the main home tab, in the submenus underneath the main home tab, where you start off when you first log in. You can make any adjustments, of course, to your email address, home address, or account information using the My Account tool. Um, in the My Account tool, you can also change that assigned user ID and password when you first started your trial. In the Learning Center itself, there's a variety of different help articles, education materials that you can access. Um, you can get the PDF document of the Quick Start Guide and the User Guide as well. Again, sign up for the coaching sessions. <clears throat> There's an archive of our various tip sheets on using the tools and different strategies. Um, you can access the tutorials, those flash demonstrations. And a lot of our webinars are archived. We're actually recording this one as well, so it should be available in the archives probably tomorrow or on Friday. Um, the strategy help pages, you can link there to view a general discussion on the different strategies. You have a link to the Priority One email archive. This is an archive of those price watch alerts and morning updates that are sent to you every day. Um, various links to free options education and further learning. And there's also links for market activity and, of course, the glossary of terms. The Learning Center has a lot of information that you can access. Uh, we have some various educational products. I'll discuss those at the end of the presentation. You can access the educational products right there in the Power Store. Uh, we also have a blog that you can go to, the Power Options blog, and if you're uh, moving from a 14-day free trial into a subscription, you want to make sure you click the sign-up bonuses there, take advantage of some various uh, free offers um, that we have for you to help uh, enhance your process. Okay, now next to the Home tool locked in place is the My Portfolio tool. This is where we can track our paper trades or our actual positions and view potential rollout opportunities. We'll be going through that later on in the presentation. And then I have my general list of strategy tabs. So if I wanted to access the tools for covered calls or naked puts, I would just click on those tabs. Um, and that would give me access to the various search tools and analysis tools for that particular strategy. Now we do support over 23 different option strategies. And as you see in the top here, I only have about eight uh, different, um, about seven, I'm sorry, different strategies selected. And of course, the custom spreads tool. But if I was using a different strategy, say I was using diagonal spreads, calendar calls, or calendar put spreads, or I was using long calls and long puts, and I don't see that as one of my default tabs, I can simply go into the other strategies tab, which is locked in place, and we can pick and choose from the available strategies over here on the left which ones we want to view um, on our tab menu. So before I go any further, I just want to ask everyone here, this will help me sort of direct the presentation a little bit more, what I'd like to know is what types of option strategies are you using right now? Are you mainly researching or trading covered calls and naked puts? Are you doing protective uh, strategies, mostly married puts and uh, collar spreads, for example? Are you speculating using long calls and long puts? Are you trading the credit and debit spreads? And this, of course, includes iron condors. Or are you doing the calendar spreads, calendar calls or calendar puts, horizontal or diagonal, uh, the time spreads, for example? So just let me know what types of option strategies you're currently doing or researching right now, and that'll help us gear the presentation a little bit. All right, I've got most of the votes, and I'm going to leave this open for another 15 seconds or so, uh, give everyone a chance to vote. I'll share the results here with everybody. Okay, Mark says he's also doing the synthetic stock and the synthetic short. <clears throat> and you can uh, select those strategies as well, of course, from the available. We don't call them synthetics. We just call them by their, their natural name. All right, so we've had the poll open for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll, and uh, we'll share the results with everyone. Okay, so we have 57% of our attendees are doing covered calls and naked puts. 14% uh, are using the protective option strategies, married puts and collars. And we've got 29% doing credit and debit spreads. Okay, well, if we take a look at our uh, listed results here, I already have covered call and naked put. Those were our winners for this afternoon. 
Um, uh, we also had a few doing, <coughs> excuse me, the protective option strategies. I'll just go ahead and move the married puts and collars up to tab three and tab four. I do have bull put credit and I do have the iron condor position. Um, but instead of long call here, let's go ahead and remove that since we didn't have anyone doing long calls. And I'll, let me move iron condors down and we'll go ahead and just add bear call credits to the menu. So when I want to add a strategy, I just select it from our available strategies menu. I'll highlight bear call credit and then click add to menu. It'll now appear in the next available tab. I won't add any of the debit spreads for now, but if just any time you wanted to add a spread, just remove one strategy that you're not using and then you can just add it from the list. You can either double click on it or highlight it and then select add to menu. Once I have my selections in place, we'll click save and that will readjust our tabs up at the top. So now we see we have covered call, naked put, married put, collar, and so forth. Okay. Well, let's start off in the covered call screen. So for those of you doing covered calls, to access the tools, I'll go ahead and click on the covered call tab. Now this general layout we see in the covered call menu is the same that you'll see for every strategy. Over on the right, you'll see the basic profit and loss chart for the covered call position. Uh, we see the profit and loss chart, our hockey stick graph here. We have a limited potential gain and we do have a fair amount of risk on the downside if we don't protect ourselves. Um, over to the right underneath of our basic profit and loss chart, we do have uh, some educational products that will be listed for the particular strategy. This is the covered call course. Um, it's a book, DVD, and a workbook that was written by Ernie and Greg Zrenner, which discusses uh, their techniques when they were trading covered calls. Okay, in the pod section, we start off with just your basic overview for the strategy. And this, as I mentioned, this will be the same in each strategy. So we see we have some basic bullet points for a covered call. We're going to buy a stock and sell a call option. It's a bullish to neutral strategy. We expect the stock to stay the same or go up in price, hopefully getting a sign to earn that two, two and a half, maybe three percent return. This is considered a conservative strategy, but it can get people into a lot of trouble if they don't pay attention to the risk or don't take proper steps to protect themselves on the downside. Um, it's one of the most popular option strategies, and uh, the reason why it's one of the most popular is anytime if you're just if you're just starting out in options and you just open up an account, uh, they'll probably qualify you right away to trade uh, covered calls and maybe also buy calls and buy puts as well. Underneath of our overview, oh, I'm sorry, you also have the link here to the main strategy help page for that particular strategy. This is a more in-depth discussion on the particular strategy that you're researching. The next pod is the tools pod. And for covered calls, we have uh, one or two particular tools that are distinctive to the covered call screen. We have the covered call wizard, um, which will help you just It'll prompt you to answer some questions, multiple choice, to help build a search for you in our patented search screen. And the quick find tool, which will help you identify how much money is on the table right now if you're researching a particular stock. My personal preference is that if I'm looking for covered calls on a stock that I've been tracking to see what's available for the next month or 60 days out in time, I prefer to use the option chain. So the quick find and the option chain tool, also the, uh, I'm sorry, also the search by symbol tool, these are the tools you would use in the covered call section if you're looking for possibility, covered call possibilities one stock at a time. If I'm looking for covered calls, possibilities across the entire universe of options that match my specific criteria, I'm going to use the search tool or start off with the sample search menu as a stepping stone to create my own personal search. During your 14-day free trial, you also have access to the back testing. So you can run historical searches based on criteria, to see what cover calls would have matched your methodology back in time, and then you can go forward and see how that list of results would have performed. And of course, there's also a historical search by symbol tool. Now the third pod that we have on our main strategy menus here, down at the bottom is going to be your basic learning center for the strategy. There's a lot of tip sheets, white papers, and articles that are listed here for you to get better acquainted, not only with the strategy if you're just starting out learning covered calls, but also using the tools on power options. Okay. So let's go into some of the tools here. Again, I mentioned if I'm looking for a particular stock, let's say that I'm interested in, I'll just take one of mine. Say I'm looking interested in finding June covered call opportunities on Silver Wheat and SLW. Uh, one th I can go into the Quick Find tool. And what this will do is just prompt me to enter in my information. So I'll just type in SLW. Uh, let's just keep it simple and say I have 100 shares of silver wheat and I'm looking for opportunities. 
um, what's available in the market. And then I can select sort of if I'm bullish, if I think the stock's going to be moving up the next three days, if I'm slightly bearish on the position, or if I'm neutral. Okay, let's just leave it at neutral for right now and go ahead and click Submit. And the Quick Find tool, or what's also dubbed the Money on the Table tool, will come back with the results and show me what's available in covered calls for June expiration. And we see here we could generate about $51 in premium right now uh, by selling one contract of the June 20 call. Up at the top, I'm sorry, I think I scrolled down too fast when I linked to this page. Silver Wheaton right now is 1891. So this first position is showing me the out of the money call opportunity. I could generate $51 right now or make a possible $160 if the stock is trading above $20 June expiration. It's kind of speculative only gives me a little bit of downside protection, about 2.7% against my position. Okay? If I was a little bit more neutral, we could sell the at the money call, the 19 strike call, and generate about $91 in credit right now against our 100 shares of stock. And if, of course, the stock moves up above 19 and we're signed at June expiration, this would be $100, um, and it gives us a 4.8% downside protection. For those of you that are familiar with covered calls, when I select the neutral, what this really is comparing for me is the out-of-the-money covered call position, the at-the-money covered call position, and the in-the-money, slightly in-the-money covered call position. This is only one strike away um, for this particular stock. But really all it's showing me, it's showing me the money, the premium that's available right now that I could generate, the potential profit if I'm assigned, and the downside protection. If I wanted more information, on a covered call opportunity on Silver Wheaton, I'm going to be tempted to either go into the option chain or the search by symbol. Now the search by symbol tool, if you have several stocks that you're tracking for covered call traders, this works really well, or naked puts, it's a very similar setup. When I go into the search by symbol tool, it'll prompt me to type in, let me scroll down here, it gives me listed results here, different covered calls, I'm going to clean this up in a second. There we go, let me just select June here, just to clear that up. But what it's going to prompt me to do is I can enter in a variety of different stock symbols. Um, I believe it's up to 15 in each block, and we have five blocks. So I can look at 75 different stocks. Um, in addition to this list here, let me just go ahead. Let's say we'll add IBM into the list, and I'll type in uh, Apple as well. Um, uh, for grands, let's just go ahead and select Google. So we just type in the stocks we want to see and select our month. And when I click Submit New Stock Symbols, the search by symbol tool is going to show me the one strike in the money and the at the money or slightly out of the money covered call opportunity but you see we have a lot more information now I'm showing my downside protection for each trade so I can compare between the two uh, my percent return if assigned and using the menu up here the see more or less columns button I can select to view things such as the probability that we get assigned and earn that return different variants, if I want to see the implied volatility, the percent implied volatility range, I can select that as well, just from that see more or less columns button. Okay. Again, my preference when I'm researching one, this is handy if I always find myself just doing the one strike out of the money or one strike in the money, depending on where the stock has moved. But if I'm looking for a wider range of covered call opportunities and the information one stock at a time, my preference is to use the option chain. And the reason why is because the option chain on power options, we will show you the same on the call chain here when I link to it from the covered call screen. On the call chain, we'll show you the calculated returns if you traded the position as a covered call. So again, we have Silver Wheaton here, and we see that uh, here was our 20 strike out of the money call, excuse me, that we saw in the quick find tool. Uh, bid ask price of 53 to 57, the Black Shoals value here of 45 cents, what the option should theoretically be worth. We have our listing for current option volume and open interest, implied volatility, and then we start off with our return functions for the covered call. The downside protection is the option bid price divided by the current stock price. See here we have about a 2.8 percent return, or downside protection, I apologize. Our percent if unchanged, if the stock stays right at the same strike price between now and expiration what would our return be, and then of course our potential percent return if assigned combined with the probability. So based on your risk reward tolerance, whether you're more conservative or more aggressive, uh, if I sell the 20 strike call, uh, I'm only receiving about 53 cents up front or 2.8 percent of the stock price, I could potentially have an 8.5 percent return if assigned, if the stock moves above 20 at expiration, um, 
but I only have a 34.1% theoretical chance that the stock will be trading above that price at expiration. If I want to be more conservative, we could go slightly in the money, um, generate $1.51 up front. This would give us about a 5.4% return if assigned. I'm sorry, I linked to the wrong one. A 3.2 potential percent return if assigned. With an 8% downside protection, we have about a 65.4% probability that we'd get assigned and earn that return. As we saw before in the sample searches screen, if I wanted to add more columns, so we could click the See More or Less Columns button and pick and choose which columns we wanted to see in our results table. If you notice here over on the right, I've added the percent if assigned annual and the percent if unchanged annualized return. This will help me with my covered call analysis. I'm just looking at June right now, but if I wanted to look at all available months to compare the different uh, returns and oops, probabilities, if I'm trying to compare June and July, I wouldn't want to compare the static percent return if assigned or the static downside protection between two equal strikes. I'm going to want to look at the annualized percent if unchanged or the annualized percentage if assigned to correctly be able to compare between the two different months. Of course, we can scroll down. If you tend to trade in the money covered calls that are farther out in time, um, you can just scroll down here and you can look at the September series, look at the December series see your returns, your annualized returns, for example, compared to the downside protection as well. Right? The main bread and butter of our tool, of course, of our screens is the search tool. So I'm still in the covered call tab, even though I'm looking at the option chain. I'm going to go ahead and link to the search screen now. And the search screen, when I first open up the search tool, I'm going to see a list of potential trades uh, that match a default criteria that are listed below. So we have the same general information we saw earlier in the search by symbol tool. We have our stock price, company information, uh, I'm sorry, company symbol, stock price, the option information. So here in Pepsi, we're shown we can sell the June 62 and a half call. Uh, this would generate about $1.03 of premium, downside protection of 1.7% and a return if assigned of only 2.1%. Now, again, this is not a recommendation nor a suggestion of what you should trade. This is just based on the default criteria that we have listed below. And I apologize, I was working with a customer the other day and I, I had set this up. When you first pull up your screen, you're most likely looking at the initial value search, the general at the money where we have higher potential return if assigns, higher downside protections. Um, and we can scroll down below. If you wanted to start off with an in the money search, you can select the default search for in the money or if you focus out of the money. You could select that default search and use that as a stepping stone as well. But the whole point of this screen is to put in our specific criteria of what you would want to see. So for a covered call position, when I'm looking at this, we see that my defaults I have listed. I'm looking in June. I'm going to leave that for now. <clears throat> but I'm looking for a minimum downside protection of 3% and a percent if assigned of 3%. Now, if you don't know what a strategy or a filter column means, what the definition of a particular filter column is, you just want to hover over that uh, text link there, and you'll receive a pop-up definition that describes the calculation for this and what it actually pertains to in the strategy. So if I wanted to increase my values, I only want to see covered call opportunities that we're offering at least a 5% downside protection, uh, maybe a 3% return if unchanged, and a 3% return if assigned. I just plug in those values that I want to see. You want to see options with more liquidity. Um, I can use the option volume today. Let's say I only want to see those options that have traded at least 50 contracts today. And uh, broader range have an open interest of, let's say, 500 contracts. If I wanted to go a certain range in or out of the money, if I find myself only trading covered calls that are about 5% in the money or are be no more than 5% in the money and no more than 5% out of the money, I can just put that into the screen. So for the show in the money, percent in the money, I put in blank to five, so it'll only show me those results where the covered call is not more than 5% in the money, and I'll also go no more than 5% out of the money as well. Some of the features that I use in the credit spreads and debit spreads, um, I also use when I'm looking for covered calls and naked puts, is the earnings date field. I tend to specifically look for positions that do not have an earnings date between now and expiration. I don't want any sudden surprises uh, that might cause the stock to have a significant drop or a significant rise, for example, if I'm using a bear call credit spread strategy or a bear put debit spread. If you also prefer to filter out stocks that have an ex-dividend date between now and expiration when you're trading covered calls, uh, you can just select that as well. 
And as I mentioned, the center section here, this is most of our option information. We already added some things for liquidity and changed the return. But if I wanted to put in filters for a delta or implied volatility, what I think is more important is to use a percent implied volatility range. This shows you where the options implied volatility is now compared to where it has been over the life of the option. Black-Scholes ratios, this will help you identify if the option is overvalued or undervalued. It's uh, basically the current option bid price divided by its theoretical worth. So if a Black-Scholes ratio of greater than one, that tells me that the option is overvalued. Um, you can also use the implied volatility versus historical volatility, or SIV, if those are fields that you use to analyze if the option is overvalued or undervalued. They're there for you as well. And then we can screen specifically for time value, percentage time value, and bid ask spread, for example. Now, over on the right-hand side of our filters, our greater than and less than fields, our stock information. Okay? And the one key that I always want to mention when you first look at the screen is you, you never want to be overwhelmed by this. Yes, there's about 30 to 35 different option criteria and stock criteria that you can use. But first, never think that you have to put in something into each criteria. If you tried to put in something into each one of these criteria, every time you ran a search, you'd end up with a message that says, sorry, there's no results that match your criteria. Keep it simple and just use what you regularly want to see. For example, when I'm going into a covered call, I might already have it in my mind saying, okay, I want to look for stocks that have good fundamentals, maybe strong earnings, good broker recommendation, uh, maybe pay a dividend, maybe not, have a certain average stock volume, maybe stocks that are trading in an uptrend, and I want to make sure I'm seeing at least a 3 or 4% return if assigned, have a downside protection of at least 5%, and an option bid price, let's say, of at least 80 or 90 cents. You know going into it what you want to see, so all you have to do is tell the system, this is what I want. And my preference maybe, maybe I'm sorry, my preference might be, instead of trading stocks that are up to $100 per share, my portfolio value might only allow me to trade stocks, let's say, between $5 and $65. So I'll just go ahead and plug that in. Uh, these default here, we're looking for only those stocks that have an earnings per share growth of 7%. They've grown in earnings from 7% from last year to this year. Uh, P.E. ratio, for example, and broker recommendation. If these aren't filters that you use, you can take them out. Just delete the values there. Or if you wanted to add something else, if you had something specific that you like to look for, say a, a PEG ratio, the price earnings to growth, or a percent of 52-week range, just plug in what you want to see. Okay? Um, again, if I wanted to see dividend stocks, I could put that in as well. Um, average stock volume, for example, if I only wanted to see stocks that trade at least 750,000 shares per day on average over the last 90 days, we'll just plug that in. And if you want to use some technical information, RSI, Bollinger Band ranges, you see here I'm also only looking for stocks that are currently trading above their 50-day moving average. The so stocks are in an uptrend. Uh, we could select that as well. In the center section, we also have a field in all of our search screens for recommended lists. Um, so if I didn't want to put in a list of filters for fundamental and technical criteria, but let's say I wanted to scan just against a particular stock list, I'll click the drop-down menu, and I can select things such as the Dow 30, for example. There's a variety of different ETF lists that we can select. If you just wanted to screen against the IBD 100 or the CanSlim list, for those of you doing credit spreads or iron condors, you might just want to screen against indexes and ETFs, so you could select that list in your search screen. It'll look very similar. If I'm in the iron condor search, it'll look very similar to what we're seeing here. Of course, some of the criteria would be different. Um, and so for example, instead of having a percent probability assigned that we have with a covered call, you might have the percent probability between in an iron condor screen. Um, the S&P 5 star list, I'm sorry, that's another list that's uh, uh, properly used among our, our clients as well. So rather than putting in filters on the right-hand side for our stock fundamentals or technicals, you could select a specific stock list. In addition to that, you can create your own personal stock list. For example, if I only track 40 to 50 different stocks, um, here in this section where it says recommended list next to that has create and modify lists, if I click on that link, um, it'll give me the list that I've already created. Um, but I can also create a new list just by clicking New, and I would just put in a name for my particular stock list and then list all of my symbols. I could copy and paste them, um, type them in by comma or space delimited, and then I would have created my own personal list that I can select from that drop-down menu. And then at any time, you can come into this search and pull up that list. Once you've created a list, for example, in the covered call screen, 
It'll also be available across all other strategies, so you'll be able to pull up that stock list as well. After I've adjusted my criteria, well, I'll just go ahead and hit submit these settings. Let's see if we have anything that matches our criteria. Well, that's great. So for June expiration, we only have seven results that match that new criteria that we just entered. Um, <clears throat> so out of all 3,200 optionable stocks, we, and probably for June, there's probably about, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe let's say 30,000 or so uh, possible covered call opportunities, we've narrowed it down to seven that match our criteria. Now I've sorted my results by percentage if assigned, a percent return if assigned from highest to lowest, but just because this coin star position is at the top of my list that matches my criteria, am I going to go ahead and jump into this covered call position right now? No. What I want to do next is use the more information button, these little blue buttons over on the left hand side. This will allow me to further research the stock or the option. So I can go into stock chart, for example. I can take a look at a basic one-year snapshot or big charts. Um, big charts is kind of a, it, it's a free charting service, I'm sorry, where you can customize some of the different views. If you wanted to view Bollinger Bands or if you wanted to view on option volume or Williams R, for example, you can see that on your stock screen. Um, I had a customer earlier today ask me if we are go ever going to enhance our charting software, and my response was, oh, we're more than up to doing that. It's not our charting software. We're linking to a free service. But what would you like to see? And that's important because any time when you're using the tools, if you, if you think there's a filter that's missing that you would like to use for your credit spreads, for your covered calls, or for your protective put positions, um, if you see something that's lacking in big charts, that you'd like to see a charting service, or you have access to a free charting service that includes some of the different information that you would like to use, just let us know and we'll try to incorporate that into the search function and into the smart menu here for the more information menu. After I've taken a look at the stock chart, um, I'm going to want to look at the company information. I always like to look at the recent headlines, see if there's anything about the company, um, maybe a pending uh, trial or uh, some kind of boardroom scandal that might cause me uh, hesitation to enter in the position. I can look at the last earnings and events, for example, and also the profile if I want to make sure what sector industry this company was in, what they pay their CEOs. That's all available on that profile link. Next thing I might do when I'm doing covered calls is I'll link to the option chain as we saw before. So on this result, we have Coinstar here. It's at 5402, and we're shown the sort of at the money June 55 call with a downside protection of 5.2 percent, percent return if assigned to 7.4 percent. And we have our probability and our other data there. But if I wanted to compare this after I looked at the stock chart and I decided this was a good company, I think I, I feel strongly about this company and I like the profile and the earnings and events information, what I might do now is from this menu, I could link to the option chain again. And this will show us the various covered call opportunities. Now highlighted in red is the covered call position I linked over from on the search screen. But we see here we could compare it to the 50 strike call. So if I wanted to be a little bit more conservative, give up a little return, we could sell the June 50 call on Coinstar for 520. This would give us a 9.6% downside protection or a 2.5% return if assigned. Um, if I was more aggressive, I, I, of course, could sell the 60 call. This would generate about 2% against my current position right now, about 110. But if the stock did go above 60 at June expiration, you could potentially make 13.4% return if assigned. So going here will allow you to compare the other strikes to see which one best suits what you want. Now, sure, when I put in my criteria in the search screen, the reason I did that is because those are the positions I wanted to see. But after looking at the stock chart and a little bit more analysis, I wanted to be a little bit more conservative and I was still comfortable with this return, um, you know, I could do that, run my comparisons here on the option chain screen. When you're running a search for the credit spreads or the debit spreads, naturally you won't link to the option chain. Once you have your results, you wouldn't link to the option chain to do other comparisons. What you would do is link to the search by symbol tool, and you could do that from the covered call screen as well. You know, I could link to the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the search by symbol tool there to see the different results. Um, but that's what you'd want to link to in the credit spread or the debit spreads because it would show you all credit spread or debit spread combinations on that stock that you were researching. All right. Um, the last thing that I always want to do before I jump into a trade is I'll go ahead and link over to the profit and loss chart. This will just show me my position graphically. Uh, but one thing that's unique 
that we can do on the power options chart here, profit and loss chart, is we can run our what if scenarios. So you notice down at the bottom here, I have views for calculate expected profit and loss. Um, so I could put in what would happen to my position if Coinstar did drop to $50, let's say in the next two weeks or so. Well, 6.8, that's the halfway point. That's why that was selected. So I'll just leave it at the halfway point. So I put in my expected stock price and I'll click on calculate. It will redraw the chart for me. And then down below, this would show me I have a loss on my stock of about $400. We'd gain about $214 on our short obligation. So we'd still have a loss of about $186 if the stock was trading around $50 per share. Okay. Of course, we could run the other scenario. What would happen if the stock moved up to $60 per share on the same date? We'll hit calculate. It'll redraw the chart for us. So if the stock's at $60, we'd see that we'd have a profit of about $300. We gain $600 on the stock, but we'd lose $300 on the option. We have to pay more to buy it back. Of course, at that point, we'd probably just say, okay, let's, we'll probably just let ourselves get assigned to June and take the return. Oh. Now I'll get on my soapbox for a little bit. I, I won't be be too brash about this. But we see here, of course, the standard profit and loss chart of a covered call. Here's our return. It's a very high return of about 7.1% for this particular position. Again, if and only if the stock's trading above our short-term strike price at expiration. In the last several weeks, in about the past two and a half, three weeks, we've seen a 10% decline across the markets. Um, and the problem is here is you can get hurt because if I'm if I generated, what was it, about 5%, my downside protection was about 5% here. So if I collected 5% against my stock position for selling this covered call, that means I technically still have 95% at risk if the stock goes bankrupt. Um, I actually do not trade covered. I wrote a book on naked puts with Ernie about three years ago. Um, that's what I was doing at the time, but because of the significant losses, I don't trade naked puts anymore. I do still sell puts, but I use them in the context of a protective position. Um, I don't do straight covered calls anymore either. What I prefer to use is standard collar spreads. And we do have a collar search that you can use to identify positions that match your personal risk and still gain the percentage return. But if I'm analyzing a covered call position, for example, using this profit and loss chart, I can quickly add different combinations uh, different options into this setup to see what a position would look like. Now, standard caller is taking, uh, you know, your at or out of the money covered call position, and adding an out of the money put option in the same expiration month, so that you have guaranteed protection. As many of us saw during the flash crash of May 6, and many of us have seen when the market's down 300 or 400 points at the open, stop losses sometimes do not guarantee you. I should say they don't guarantee you an exit price. What it really a stop order is, say, hey, we close the position at whatever the market price is once my trigger has been hit. If it happens during the market, sure, your 10% stop loss will work. But if it happens in the pre or after market hours, or it happens during a flash crash, the order is triggered and you get out at a lower potential price, whatever the market can fill you for. So that's my soapbox. I only trade long stock positions with protection in place now. I will do naked puts, but at the same time I sell a put, I'm buying a put further out in time, several months out of time, essentially creating a calendar put spread. Um, all right, so I wanted to change this to a collar just to see what it would look like. I'll click on View Options up at the top. We'll select June because that's where our call option is listed. And we see we have our available calls. So 55 calls has already been added. I'm going to see what would happen to my position if I added the out-of-the-money 50-strike put. I know I'm going to take away some of the potential profit, but if it still matches my comfortability level of at least a 3% return, the collar might be a better trade. So once I've clicked on the link for the 50-strike put in the chain here, it automatically added the information into our third available box. When I create a collar, I'm going to sell the call, as we would in the covered call, and I'm going to buy the put, so I'm going to leave it at one contract. I'm actually not going to put in a price. I'm going to leave the price blank, and it'll grab the natural ask price since I'm buying this put option, which is about $1.80. So once I've submitted that, we now see what my collar position would look like. Now, rather than having a 100% risk of what I invested or significant risk if the stock tanks, what I've done by creating this collar is I'm still able to generate a 3.5% return if I'm assigned. That still matched my criteria. But now the most I can lose if the stock drops, if it goes below $50 per share, has a sudden pre or after market drop, 
is 5.9%. Uh, so this is more of a protective position, more of a conservative position. You can screen for collars specifically in the collar tool, of course, just as we did for the covered call. Or you can run scenarios if you're researching covered calls, just add the lower strike put to it or different puts to it to see what your risk-reward ratio would be. And as we did before, we could simulate our what-if scenarios, what would happen if the stock moved up to $55 per share, and hit calculate and redraw the chart for us, and then it will show us the gain on the stock, uh, the gain or loss on the call, and the gain or loss on the put, and what our total value would be if the stock hit a certain price. All right, so what have we done? We've, we've customized our, our strategy tabs. Um, we looked uh, one strike at a time using the quick find tool and the option chain tool. Again, if you're in the bull put credit or the bear call credit spread tabs, um, rather than using the option chain that's listed there, you just use the search by symbol tool, or in the iron condor, for example, we just use the search by symbol tool to identify positions. All the math and the calculations will be shown for you. After we customized our search criteria, we identified the positions uh, in less than a second that matched what we wanted to see. And then we used the more information buttons to look at the stock chart, company information, do further research and analysis. I could go more in depth uh, to both the option detail and the stock detail using the research tab menu here. And then we went to the profit and loss chart to run our what if scenarios. Now we're ready to place the trade, whether we're going to track it as a real trade or as a paper trade. If you're currently using Options Express or Brokers Express, you can use the broker link here in the More Information menu to link directly to your trading platform, to link directly to Options Express, and you can choose to enter it as a covered call, leg into the position by buying the stock and then selling the call, or view you, your account's overview. Um, you just want to set that up in the My Account tool to tell your Options Express account or tell Options Express that you want to allow information from Power Options, so this saves you from opening a new window, logging in, and then putting in your information. When you use the broker link, it'll copy over the stock and the option information for you, so you don't have to enter in anything. You just have to tell the uh, trade platform there that you want how many shares you want to do, how many contracts, and if you want to use a limit order or a limit net debit order, for example. And then just hit uh, submit, and uh, it'll put it into the put your order into the platform for you. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to do, of course, is after I've uh, placed my trade or log on to your broker, if you're not using Options Express, of course, place your trade. And then what we're going to do is come back into here, and we're going to add it to the portfolio. Now, if you haven't created a portfolio yet, you'll just have this choice here to create a new portfolio, and you just type in a name, call it My Covered Calls Portfolio or Test Portfolio, for example. I have a variety of... Uh, portfolio is created for different webinars. I'm going to go ahead and put this into the covered calls portfolio. So I just have to select my portfolio and then click insert. And all the information will be copied over for me again. I have the stock symbol here. I just have to put in my number of shares, 100, uh, my commission fee of zero dollars. I'll treat this as a paper trade. Now let's say that I was able, I will enter the stock at 54. We'll just keep things simple. Let's say my option premium was actually two dollars and seventy cents. Of course, I'm only going to sell one contract as well. So when I'm entering the covered call, I just link right from that search screen. We'll go ahead and click submit. Now this is going to link me into the profit and loss portfolio, where we track our open positions. Um, so we see now that we're in the my portfolio tab, and we're in the profit and loss portfolios. Some of the other portfolio tools that you have available, the historical report. So anytime I make an adjustment to one of my positions, uh, using the more information menus that we'll look at in a moment, if I'm going to buy to close a call or if I'm going to roll the covered call position, the closed information will be archived in the historical report. So I can use that as a uh, I'm sorry, I can use that as a template when I'm preparing my taxes. You'll also be able to see it in the analysis view. The difference between the two is the historical reports um, can show you all of your realized gain and loss or your unrealized gain or loss or all positions organized by trade entry date. The analysis view shows you your current open positions and all of your closed positions historically, but organized by stock symbol rather than by trade date. You can also get a quick view of the snapshots and the uh, allocation view if you want to see how much money you have allocated in a different sector or industry or your percentage of your portfolio. Uh, that's available in the allocation. And I'll talk about the alert summary page in just one moment. Okay. All right, so here is my covered calls portfolio. I can enter new positions manually right from this drop-down menu. I can enter in long stock positions or I can enter in a new covered call. 
Um, let's go ahead and walk through that. I already have one of those. Let me just, okay, I don't have one of those. Let's say I wanted to enter a manual covered call. I'll just click on the covered call. It'll take us to the same screen we just saw, that entry field, but I don't have anything entered. Uh, so let's say I was looking at Fossil, and I just purchased uh, 100 shares of FOSL today. Again, I'm going to put in a commission fee of $0. I believe Fossil's trading right around $37 per share, so I'll just put that in. And then underneath, I'll just click Select Option, and it'll pull up a chain for me. Um, that's 36.62, so it's a little bit higher. And let's just say we're going to sell the In the Money 35 strike call. So I'll just select it from that menu. Puts it right there for me. We're, of course, doing one contract, zero commissions. And uh, since the stock's a little bit higher, let's just say we got in at 290. And then I'll go ahead and click Submit. And we'll see the same results. This fossil covered call will now be listed with our other open positions as well. So we now have our Coinstar position listed as a linked trade. This is a preferable view for me. In my other brokers in uh, my Fidelity account, for example, it's not ever linked such as this. Uh, they're making some changes, but when I go to my portfolio, I might see long stock, long stock, short call, short call, short call, and those three short calls aren't linked to the previous two long stocks. Then I might have long stock, short call, and, and so forth. It's not as a linked position. I prefer this view so I can see the positions next to each other. The issue price... Um, is what we originally received when we entered the position or paid when we entered the position. Our total net cost for 100 shares. As we scroll over to the right, I can see the current price. So we've, uh, stocks dropped about four cents. And of course, due to the bid ask spread, we have about a 20 cent difference from our original sell price. And I can see the individual gain and loss on each leg. Well, that's a decent view, but when I'm doing linked positions, covered call, especially collars when I'm trading those, married puts, what I always check in my portfolio is this box up here at the top to view the position analysis. And what that does for me is it adds six, excuse me, it adds six columns over to the right-hand side. Hold on one second, I'm just trying to, there we go. I just want to get back over to the arrow here. Okay. Now, what this shows me on the right-hand side is for each position, I'm showing the total value of the position right now. So if I liquidated the total position, my original position cost, stock minus call in this case, was 51.30. If I sold to close my stock and bought to close my call, my liquidation value would be 51.06. So I'd have a loss of about 0.5%. But if I hold it to expiration, we'll have a gain of about 5.2%. Okay, so this allows me to compare where I stand right now to what I'll potentially make at expiration. Now, this future expiration gain or loss, we're not speculating um, where the stock's going to be. What this does just says if the stock stays where it is right now on June expiration, you'd expect to make the full profit on the Coinstar position of 5.2%. So you can always compare your liquidation value to your future expiration value. Okay? That just gives me a better view. It's, it's a linked position. I can see where both positions stand together, uh, so I see the total view. Okay? I'm going to roll back, scroll back over here to the left-hand side. And we're going to talk about the alerts. In addition to being able to track your position and view the liquidation gain or loss and expiration gain or loss in the entire position as a comparison view, you can also set a variety of alerts on your position. And you see on this uh, paper trade here I have for Rackspace, R-A-X, the view column has been highlighted in red. Now, the stock has had a significant drop since I put in this paper trade on 5.3. It's down 14.4%, and I've gained 88% on my call position. I originally sold it for $1.25. The call is now available for $0.15. Cents. Of course, that's countered by the $3 loss I have on the covered call position. So, when if I want to set an alert on a position, or I want to see what alert has been triggered, I'll just click on the View link here next to my position, this will pull up the alerts page for us. And you can see I can set a variety of different alerts. If I wanted to be notified if the stock price um, hit a certain price, let's say I, didn't, I wanted to make sure to be notified if the stock dropped below, uh, let's say, $17 per share or above $20 per share. If there was a percentage increase or decrease in the stock price as well, I could put that in. This is an automatic alert that has set for me, so my option premium has dropped more than 80% of its existing value. Uh, so that's why that highlight was triggered up here at the top. It gives me the details. And then we also see I could set an alert for the time value limit for the option ask price or the days to expiration. If I wanted to be notified, if I'm within five days to expiration, I can put that in as well. 
There's also uh, the poll position change. So if I wanted to be notified if the option uh, changed in uh, value by more than 20% or more than 15%, I could put that in as well for the position percent change rather than putting in this, an upper limit or lower limit for the stock or for the option. You can also put in different technical indicators. If I wanted to be notified or alerted if my stock was trading above or below a 50 or 20 day moving average, or if the stock had breached an upper or lower Bollinger Band, or if the stock reached a new 52 week high or 52 week low, we could set those as well. And once I've set my alerts, I'll just click Save. Okay, and then anytime an alert is triggered, you'll be able to see it on the portfolio to highlight the column. If I had set an upper or lower limit, monetary limit for my stock or my option, that would automatically have been recorded here and shown in my lower stop limit or upper stop limit fields in this area. Okay? Well, Rackspace has hit an alert. What does that mean? Well, that probably means I'm going to want to do some management. I let this position get away from me. I wasn't watching it on a regular basis. The stock's dropped about $2.78. It's shown right there for me. Of course, I've gained on my option, but that really didn't help. Again, this is sort of the limitations with doing covered calls. After a long horizon of trading covered calls in your portfolio, you start to realize that you're in a sorting machine. Your winners get called away from you for a 2 or 3% gain and tend to move up further without you but the losers stay in your portfolio. But what we want to do now, and this is for any position again, whether you're tracking bear call credit spreads, oops, click the long link, I have you know, credit spreads listed here, iron condors, you can create as many portfolios as you want and have as many positions in each portfolio. Um, but this functionality will be all the same whether you're tracking a credit spread, debit spread, condor, married put, collar. What I'll do now is using the more information buttons next to our rack space position, I'm going to go ahead and select position actions. Now I can manually, if I've already decided to close the leg um, or add an option leg, if I was going to add a put to it to start protecting it now, um, I could do that manually right here from this position actions menu. But what you really want to do is go into the position analysis screen from the portfolio. This is a very powerful tool, the position analysis screen from the profit and loss portfolio. It gives us a breakdown of our original covered call position, okay, our original entry prices for our stock and for the option. And here we see what our current uh, ask price is, the current delta of our short call, the time value that's remaining in the option, and our days to expiration. I have different links here to do further research. As I scroll further below, the values that we saw in the current liquidation value and future expiration value are expanded here. Um, so we see there's our current liquidation value. Here's our future expiration value if Rackspace stays at about the same price between now and June expiration. And I can click the details link to see the actual calculations if I wanted to get more in depth. But down below, we have calculated for us what the system did is looked at our current position and then looked at all the available options for our for Rackspace, excuse me, and we have potential rollout opportunity. So we could buy to close our June 20 call for about 15 cents and we're shown we could sell to open the July 15 call for two dollars and fifteen cents. So we'd keep about a dollar from our initial premium. Remember we sold our 20 call for dollar twenty five. We'd collect two fifteen. So our new adjusted net credit would be three ten. This does give us an increased downside protection of seventeen percent, but there's a problem. Even if I'm assigned now if the stock stays above fifteen we're going to have an, a guaranteed loss of 5.7%. Of course, there's a 65.1% chance that the stock would remain above 15. Because now instead of selling the stock at $20, we're selling it at 15, which is well below our cost basis. Well, we might want to look at instead the July 17 and a half call. Uh, we could collect 90 cents for that right now. This would give it an adjusted net credit of $2 or 10.4% downside protection. And we could potentially make, let me clean this up a little bit, I apologize, let's do that. Potentially make 2% if we're assigned at 17 and a half, then we only have a 38.8% chance. So this gives you a way to compare how you might be able to fix your position by adjusting it or roll out opportunities on your given covered call position. Now if I wanted to see this graphically, it's great to see the numbers, but if I want to see it graphically, we'll just use that more information button. I'll click on simulate trade new. And now what we're shown here is over on the left, this is our original position. 
we might have realized a maximum return of 11.7% if the stock hadn't dropped completely out of bed on us. And right now we have a current return or current loss of 9.1%. Uh, so we're, we're taking a significant loss in the position. And we're shown here our profit and loss chart over here on the left. Uh, this is our current position where we stand right now. Of course, here's the stock price, the green line. So there's our 9% loss value. And over here on the right, this is what the position will look like um, if we roll the position to the July expiration. So yes, we gave up some potential return, but we're far beyond that now. The stock has really dropped below our strike price. So this adjustment might give us a new potential profitable return if there's a slight recovery between now and July expiration. So based on what your expectation is for the stock and what your goals are for the position, uh, you can use this. This will really help you analyze what it would look like if you made the adjustment before actually placing the trade. And if I wanted to go ahead and add this adjustment to my portfolio, rather than going in and using the more information button as we saw before and selecting to close the leg and then sell to open this new option, I could go ahead and click submit change to portfolio right here. That would automatically buy to close my current June 20 call on Rackspace and sell to open the July 17 call. So when I look at my rack space position, now we have the July 17 and a half call against our position. And if I went into the analysis view or the historical view, let's just go ahead and look at the analysis view very quickly. As I mentioned, this will be up. Oh, I just want all positions. There we go. Do I have the wrong year selected? Yes, I do. I apologize. Let me select 2010. This will be a little bit better for us. How about that? Okay. So here's our overview, and you see the history for each position. There was a couple rollout opportunities that were done on Massey Energy, MEE. -E. So in the white here, these are closed positions. The uh, red highlighted columns are showing me what's open right now. And then I can see the total gain and loss in my position, including our adjustments. This is one of, you can see the losses that I have here in this current market. Most of these simulated covered calls, these paper trades, were just opened in the last, uh, I'm sorry, last three or four weeks, and you can see how negative and how red this position is. And one covered call position is turning a profit, and we just rolled the rack space position, still have a loss of 8.6%. Um, and you, you might not agree with that adjustment, that's fine, I'm just showing it as an example. Uh, but you see here, here's our history, our open position with the July 17 and a half call. We have our information and our profit and loss from the June 20 call that we just closed. So you can, oh, and Silver Wheaton down here. Uh, we have some historical view as well on that position. All right, so let me scroll up to the top of the screen now. Um, very quickly, uh, I'll just go into the bear call credit spread. I want to go into the search screen very quickly for those who said that they were interested in the credit spreads. Again, um, you don't have the option chain link here, so if you're looking for bear call credit spreads one stock at a time, just use the search by symbol field. Um, to identify bear calls that match your personal risk reward tolerance, go ahead and click on the search screen. And you see that our functionality here is very similar to what we saw on the covered call screen. It's just that some of our criteria is different. We don't have a downside protection now, our percent return if assigned. We have a listed percentage return, put in a field for net credit. We have implied volatility ratios because we're using two options now in the Black-Scholes ratios. Uh, you can set the strike difference here between the two different strikes of a spread um, or the maximum risk value. You could enter that in as well. But the stock information is essentially the same, earnings per share growth, price per earnings, and so forth. Um, and then once you adjust your criteria again, you just hit the Submit the Settings button, and then you'll see only those positions that match your criteria. And again, for every strategy, we also have a sample searches menu for you to use as a stepping stone for the bear call credit spreads. I've created a default search for just bear calls on ETFs and uh, bear call credit spreads on stocks with a low broker recommendation. So you can click on any of these and use them as a stepping stone to create your own personal search. Once I click on the sample search, I'll see the potential listed trades that match that default criteria, but I can still go down below here in the parameter field and make my adjustments. If I wanted to look for a higher return or a higher probability, I just plug that in and hit submit down at the bottom. That would link me into the search tool where I can continue to customize my search settings. And as before, in any of this, the fields, whether you're doing credit spreads, debit spreads, collars, condors, use that more information button and you can link uh, to your further research and analysis. Link to the stock chart, company information, for example, 
link to that profit and loss chart to run your what if scenarios or add a different option. Or from here, remember, if I ran this search and I saw the oil trust holders as a possible bear call credit spread, and I did the research and analysis and I liked the position, but I wanted to view other uh, combinations, we'll go ahead and click the search by symbol. And this will give us all of the different combinations that we might be able to use for OIH in the month of June with the risk reward calculated for us, our probability shown, uh, so we could run our comparisons. All right. Okay, so I'm going to navigate back over to our menu here, our uh, basic presentation. Um, why power options? Well, you have that patented search of over 23 different option strategies that you can not only customize the criteria for what you want to see, but you can also customize that screen view using the See More or Less Columns button. In the search tool, any of the data columns that you can filter by, you can select to view in the results table to help you in your comparison. We have then have the tools to quickly compare the various strategies or to analyze in more detail the stock or the options. Those powerful portfolio tools to help you paper trade, track, and manage your positions. And also all the calculations for the rollout opportunities are done for you. You don't have to waste any more time thinking, okay, if I buy it back for this and then I sell this call here, that would mean my total net credit is this, but I'm in a different strike, so what would that mean to my return? Hey, that's all... Uh, listed there for you. We also have toll-free customer or email support, um, access to the historical data that's available on the trial, but it's an extra fee from the regular standard subscriptions and the various help articles and strategy tips. I'm going to go back to the screen because I wanted to show one thing. I apologize for that. I got on my high horse a little bit. I'm going to get on it again very quickly. <laughs> um, we have 57% of investors trading covered calls and naked puts. Many of you are probably using stop losses. Many of you trading covered calls and naked puts might have gotten hurt in the past few days with a decline. I just wanted to invite you, those of you that are trading covered calls and naked puts, if you go into the married put screen or into the caller menu, um, down in the learning center for the married put and the caller section, uh, I'll just invite you to take a look at this four-part article that was written by Ernie discussing the covered call challenge, limited risk solution, using married puts and collars rather than covered calls. So you're guaranteed a limited loss that you don't take too much if the stock really goes against you. You're never suffering a 15, 20, or 35% loss. And then using power options to find married puts and collars. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, let me go scroll over to the collar menu now. There we go. I promise this is the last little lecture I'll give. <laughs> Those uh, menus are also available. Those uh, four-part articles also listed in the Collar Learning Center. But over here on the right is the book that Ernie and I wrote on using different combinations of married puts and collars for different markets. It really speaks to covered call traders who have suffered large losses. This You can still be profitable with these positions. Don't think that the insurance policy is just making sure that now you can only receive half a percent or one percent of your return. There are a lot of profitable positions you can still find, but limit your losses so you never suffer one of those 15, 20, or 30 percent losses. This book is, you can link to it here on the collar menu. You can also go right to the Power Store for the Protective Option Strategies book. It's only $13.95. It's about 200 pages long. Uh, Ernie and I discuss our philosophies on using married puts and collars positions. And we also show how to use the tools on power options using those particular strategies. So it's an inexpensive book loaded with information. I just want to point that out. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm off my high horse now. I apologize. Okay. Um, so the subscription services for power options. Uh, the 20-minute delayed service, it gives you access to all the tools in the tool menu, all 23 strategies, uh, even some of the things we didn't get a chance to review today. It's only $59.95 per month, and you can get about an 18% discount if you sign up for the annual subscription. The yearly subscription is only $600, so you're essentially paying for 12 months, but re I'm sorry, paying for 10 months, but receiving 12 months of service. The real-time service gives you access, again, to all the tools in the tool menu, all 23-plus different strategies. It's not streaming real time, but every time you refresh the page, you're going to get the premiums, the numbers, the stock price, the calculated returns, and the probabilities at that very instant. Uh, so that's only uh, about $20 more, $79.90 per month, or $800 for the year. Historical data is not included on the 20 minutes late in the real time service. Um, you can access the historical data. A three month subscription is about $99.95. But if you're already on the real-time service, it's cheaper to move up to the professional level of service 
This is about $100 per month or $1,000 for the year, but includes everything that's on the real-time service plus unlimited access to the historical suite of tools. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to the Power Options screen after I discuss a few more things here in just a minute. I wanted to show something else real quick. Um, we talked about that covered call course. It's a book, DVD, and a workbook. It's about $199, and the purchase price also includes two free months of Power Options. For those of you that are doing covered calls, again, I would suggest looking into some of those married put and collar positions. But if you're going to stay with covered calls, that's okay. We want to help you. <laughs> the covered call course here uh, can be very instructional. Um, as I mentioned, discusses, discusses Ernie and Greg's philosophies on covered calls, but also shows you how to use the tools on the site. It is $200, roughly including shipping, but that includes two free months of power options, which on the real-time service is about $160 value. Um, so that gives you some extra time to get more acquainted with the tools. Uh, the blueprint uh, that was written by Kurt Frankenberg, this is a full methodology using the married put setup as a launching point where he uses 10 different income methods off of that. In every position, he's only risking about 5 or 6%. He never loses more than that on any one position while still having an unlimited upside. Um, you can get more information um, about the blueprint and Kurt's method at RadioactiveTrading.com. And of course, I also mentioned the, the books there, the Power Options Trading Series. The Naked Put book and the Protective Option Strategies book, they're each about $13.95. They were written by Ernie Renner and myself. Our newest book is the Iron Condors book. That's actually $19.95. It was written by Mike Phillips, who's the head analyst at Power Options Applied, our advisory newsletter service, and Ernie Renner discussing what they've done with Iron Condors over the past five or six years on the advisory newsletter service. You can read about those in the Power Store or if you have questions about those different uh, educational products, just send me an email to support at PowerUp.com. As we discussed, and as you can see, Power Options really is a, a suite of tools to help save time for self-directed options investors. But if you feel you're not ready to be self-directed, uh, we have a, the advisory newsletter service, Power Options Applied. We do the work for you. There are various portfolios available on iron condors, covered calls. There's one called Palladium, which does collar spreads on indexes and e I'm sorry, ETFs mostly. Um, you can read more about that at www.poweroptionsapplied.com. And then, of course, the efficient subscription. That's where you can follow over Kurt's shoulder as he makes his radioactive trades. And you can read more about that at radioactivetrading.com. And uh, we also host webinars every Tuesday and Thursday at noon. Uh, I join Kurt as he hosts his webinar for the introduction to radioactive trading. There it is, every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon, so you can feel free to join us for that. All these webinars are completely free. Every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I host an open discussion. I don't have any planned material. You're just invited to come with any questions you have about general option strategies, power options tools, radioactive trading, or power options applied. And I'll just spend the whole hour with all the attendees answering all of their questions. Um, every Wednesday at noon, we host a similar presentation to today, the Introduction to Power Options presentation. And, uh, of course, every Tuesday and Thursday is the uh, Introduction to Radioactive Trading. Again, if you have questions of any time, please feel free to contact us. You can email us to support at powerop.com. Um, if you live inside the continental U.S., you can call us toll-free at 877-992-7971 or at 302-992-7971 if you live outside the continent of the U.S. There's also contact links on every Power Options page. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm going to stay online for a few more moments. I wanted to go back to the Power Options screen and the main home tab. As I mentioned, I did record, we are recording this presentation. It will be available Tuesday or, I'm sorry, Thursday or Friday. I apologize, I've got my days confused. Um, and you can access the full webinar archive if you just go into the Learning Center from the main home menu and then click on Webinars. If you currently don't have a 14-day free trial um, or your 14-day free trial has expired and you've decided not to subscribe, um, let me just go ahead and send this to everyone here through the chat log. Uh, this is the link to our webinars page. It's www.powerop.com slash webinars.asp. If you've recently canceled your subscription, if your trial has expired, you can come to this. This is a public page, webinars.asp. You can come to this page at any time and go through our various archive webinars. So you've got webinars on the Power Options tools. I wanted to go here 
So we didn't get a chance today to talk about and show the historical suite of tools, but there's a full hour-long presentation on using the Power Options historical suite of tools and the Power Options tools archive. Uh, there's also some discussion on the portfolio tools as well. Um, there's a lot of information in the uh, Options Strategies uh, archive. For those of you trading covered calls and naked puts, you might want to check out the parity trade discussion I did on uh, covered calls versus naked puts and show how to use the tools on Power Options to compare them. For those of you doing credit and debit spreads, uh, each one of these presentations, Vertical Spreads Part 1 and Part 2, is an hour-long presentation on vertical spreads in general and using the Power Options tools. And then, of course, uh, discussing my view on collar positions. I don't go into married puts a lot here, uh, but my view on collars is available in the Protective Options Strategies Part 1 and Part 2. And there are also some uh, webinars that might interest you in the Power Options Applied Archive. We've recently done a series of four webinars that uh, coincide with that recent book I mentioned, the Iron Condors book. So you have Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, and Part 4. And then there's other educational information listed from Power Options Applied. So this webinar archive, there's a ton of information that's going to be useful to you, not only to get more better acquainted, I should say, with the tools on power options, but also on the various strategies as well. And that's a public page, www.powerop.com slash webinars.asp. If your trial has expired, if you've canceled your subscription, if you're thinking of rejoining, you can still come into this page without a user ID and password. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've gone a little bit over. I thank you for staying with me for the entire time. I don't seem to have any questions coming in. Um, so we're going to wrap this up for today. Again, thank you for joining me. Please give me a call or send me an email if you have any questions at any time using the tools on Power Options or the option strategies in general. And uh, keep in mind those uh, free webinars that we host every week. There's about four or five different webinars that are completely free we host every week. So I look forward to seeing you maybe on Thursday afternoon when I'm joined by Kurt Frankenberg as he discusses his radioactive principles or join me Friday at 4.30 uh, for that open discussion. Just feel free to ask any questions that you have. That's the whole presentation. I don't have any planned material on Friday. I just go through and answer all the questions. All right, everyone, it was great seeing you. Thank you for joining me. Take care. We'll see you soon, and uh, happy trading. Bye-bye.